All right, doctors, welcome. And what I want to talk about today is, are attorneys addicted to MRIs? The answer is yes, especially in the injury market. Attorneys are absolutely drunk, addicted to MRIs. Now, what, what does that actually mean? Well, in the personal injury space, unfortunately, uh, many attorney firms, large firms, and even smaller firms will actually almost uh, tell their doctors that they have to do an MRI on each and every case. Now, that's a, that's a bad, bad idea. And one, it's a, it's a, it's a total overutilization of, a, of an imaging technology that is limited, very limited in the injury space for picking up the injuries of a spinal injury. So anytime you have a spinal injury or anytime you have a body injury, you have to, you have to derange the component part that you've injured. So if I break a bone, I have to derange the bone. If I break the skin, I have to derange the skin. If I uh, lacerate the eye, I have to derange the eye. If I have a gunshot wound, uh, it depends on how much tissue I derange and what tissue do I derange as to how bad the wound is. So all injuries are determined by how deranged the body part is. In the spine, spinal injuries are really interesting. Uh, I don't have to explain to you, doctors, that there's only two components really of a spine. There's bone and connective tissue. That's it. So if you say you have a spinal injury, you have to derange either the bone or the connective tissue. Now, the beautiful thing is most injuries of auto accident, work injury, guy lifted something at work, somebody hurt their neck at work, is usually not, they didn't break their neck. They didn't break their back. So normally you're not dealing with with um, fractures. What you're dealing with are connective tissue injuries. Now, connective tissue injuries are twofold, right? There's 220 specialized ligaments that hold the spine together. 23 of those are discs. Anybody can Google search, go to Wikipedia, go anywhere they want to and say, hey, what are the most common discs that herniate, all right? <laughs> there's two in the lumbar spine, the fourth and the fifth, and there's two, maybe three in the cervical spine the fifth and the sixth. You could also add the fourth, right? So there's about five discs that can routinely degenerate or routinely herniate. Now remember, 60 some percent of the adult population has these herniations and they don't even hurt. So if you look at an at, at a spinal injury, all right, good. So a patient comes in, I've got, to de- I've got to define, well, how injured are they? How, I say they injured their spine, then there has to be some sort of derangement in the spine. If the connective tissue is damaged, there's two imaging biomarkers that you can use to determine how badly damaged the ligaments are. One is in a motion unit. There's a disc and nine other ligaments around the disc. There's only two forces that cause an injury to a spine, compressive and sheer force. Doesn't matter if I get it in a sports activity, at work, in a car accident, in a slip and fall, in a in a fight. If I injure my spine, sheer and compressive force are going to injure it. It's a combination usually of both. So if I shear the ligaments, they cause excessive motion. If I just compress the ligaments, it may cause a herniation to the disc. Remember, there's a disc and then there's nine other ligaments around it. So when we look at these herniations, when we look at attorneys, attorneys are dead drunk on MRI. They're drunk on it. They're they're intoxicated with it. And they're intoxicated with it because they don't understand it. And they don't understand how limited it is. And they don't understand that there's other procedures that will give you a full assessment of how much damage to the spine that there is. So unfortunately, in the personal injury space, you'll have attorneys hook up with attorney firms and they want everything MRI, 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 MRI. They're drunk on it. It's like crack cocaine for them. They have to have it. And the only reason why they have to have it is because that's the only thing that they, they only know about one ligament. They don't know about any of the other ligaments. They don't even know in the craniocervical junction, which probably about 30% of the cervical ligaments are, they don't even know that the scan on an MRI doesn't even do a uh, scan in that area. They, they, there's no, there's no um, slice orientations that are sliced. So the upper uh, cervical spine is not even looked at in an MRI. That's why it's never reported. That's why in an MRI study, it's just a disc study. But remember, 
There's only 23 discs. There's 220 specialized ligaments. And by all count, about five of those ligaments called discs routinely will cause a problem. So the attorney is drunk on a test that shows information about five of the 220 ligaments. Now, think about this. When you, if you uh, were in the backyard as a little kid and somebody was twisting your arm or twisting your leg to make you say uncle, to make you say give, and you had this shearing pain and it was like, yeah, 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 give, I give, I give, I give, I give. Okay, <laughs> what you're experiencing is the pain that the ligament in the joint is providing you. It's a very painful thing. Now, these attorneys do not understand that excessive motion is the most problematic thing that you can have in the spine. If, if you don't believe me, just, just look, at the, look at the correction. If we take this injury at the highest level, at the absolute highest level, and we say, all right, what is the cure for this surgically? Remember, we can fracture and we can herniate and we can cause excessive motion. Because remember, we only have bone and connective tissue. That is, we're not talking about spinal injury now. We're not talking about muscle injury. We're only, or sorry, we're not talking about nerve injury. We're not talking a spinal cord injury. That's a completely different system and a completely different thing. And obviously, if it deranges, it can cause serious problems as well. But right now we're saying, and we're saying, we're talking about a spinal injury and a spine is bone and connective tissue. So with bone and connective tissue, you have either on the connective tissue side, excessive motion or disc herniation. Now a smart injury doctor knows automatically you have to take flexion extension x-rays and you have to test for excessive motion because that's going to tell you how to determine the severity and location of any ligament condition. And it's also going to give you information on how you would know to, on a, on a more probable than not basis, do an, uh, if your MRI is going to produce uh, disc findings. It's that important of a test, right? But you, got this, you have these attorney groups that go, hey, really all I want to know about is five of the 220 ligaments. That's because they're not doctors. And that's because they're highly undereducated in the injuries that they represent. A hundred percent, thousand percent, they are highly undereducated. And yet today in the market, unfortunately, they drive procedures because they drive, you'll see their bill, you know, their signs all over their billboards. And so they are picking up the injury patients. And unfortunately for those injury patients, oftentimes they're recommending something like a standard, hey, MRI, everybody. And it's not good for the person. It's also not good for the provider. It's not good for the industry at all. And it represents a huge opportunity for any doctor that understands, truly understands spinal injuries, truly understands the simplicity of what I just said. Look, there's only three things that you can image with a spinal injury. There's fracture, excessive motion, and disc herniation. And disc herniation is the least problematic of the connective tissue injuries. If you said to me, hey, uh, you can have a disc herniation or you can have severe excessive motion because you damage the ligaments that hold that motion unit together, it's going to be permanent. You're going to have it for the rest of your life. It causes severe instability in your spine. Would you rather have that or would you rather have a disc herniation? I'm going to tell you 99% of the time, <clears throat> 100% of the time, I'm going to say, give me the disc herniation. I care less about that. That's an easy fix. It's the excessive motion that's a problem. And doctors, that's what smart injury doctors know. That's what makes smart injury doctors some of the most unique and powerful doctors in the injury market today. That's what makes you really unique, is that you understand what I just said, and not only that, you understand how to take it out and present it to attorneys, to insurers, to the public, to medical doctors, to anybody that you want to. So what I do on these podcasts, doctors, is I ask you if you have any comments or you have any things that are bothering you in the personal injury space, put them down below. Put them down in the comments. Also, I very much so, each time I do one of these podcasts, it's short and uh, on a topic 
And I hope that you gain something from that topic, gives you something to think about, something to look at, something that you might want to research into more. And I look forward to on these podcasts, seeing you get on the next podcast. And I thank you for your attention on this one.